All right, so thanks for joining us, Otto. Really glad to have you here today representing Polygon ID. Um, so before we get further into the details of Polygon ID and what you guys are up to, I'd like to hear a little bit about yourself. Can you give our audience a little bit of an introduction of who you are um, and how you came to the decentralized identity space? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so yeah, I'm Otomora. I'm originally from San Jose, Costa Rica. Uh, my original exposure to decentralized identity and I guess SSI was in uh, early 2016 at a consensus conference in New York where um, I remember Christopher Allen was first talking about identity 2020 mm -hmm. and, you know, bringing in the concept of SSI and like it just became clear to me that, you know, solving identity on uh, blockchain, specifically blockchain ecosystems was like a, a hugely important thing that would like, you know, really um, help out blockchain adoption. Um, so I, I first became conscious of that back then. I it kind of stayed in the back of my mind. I followed various uh, decentralized identity projects, uh, Uport. Um, I think I applied like seven times to work at Uport, but uh, <laughs> it didn't come through. But uh, I, did, I eventually did get into Web3 full time around 2018, um, where I was working at EY, uh, leading a team of developers. And I kind of got engaged with the community in Costa Rica. Um, as a founding member of the Costa Rican Blockchain Association, we did the first Ethereum hackathon, and yeah, so all that kind of eventually led into uh, getting into Polygon, and um, you know, thought all that original knowledge around identity and and some of the things we did at EY kind of helped me get into Polygon ID and you know, leveraging CK technology for identity. So yeah, that's a little bit about my story, and yeah, I'm just just you know, really, feel really fortunate to be in this space and it's been super interesting. Yeah, great. And I know I spoke to you a few weeks ago and I asked you a little bit of the story of Polygon ID, but you didn't tell me the whole story. So I've been waiting for this moment to hear it <laughs> because it's, it, it really is interesting. Some of the background, can you, can you give us a, a little bit of, on that? Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, the, the story of of uh, like, you know, back then it was called Hermes and Identity is actually quite fascinating. Um, so all three founders, uh, Jordi Bailina, Anthony Martin, and David Schwartz, they are all from Barcelona and Catalonia and Spain. And as you know, there's like, you know, some tensions between, uh, you know, the regions in Spain and the central government and Catalonia is no exception. And, you know, Catalonia back then was... Uh, pretty heavy into kind of this independence referendum that they were trying to do and then try to make it, uh, you know, kind of a demonstrable uh, referendum to convince people that there was a chance to be independent. And um, they started kind of playing with the idea, what if we do like an online referendum using blockchain technology, right? Um, so that's when the Identity Project kind of got born, right? How do we do identity on top of a blockchain system um, to be able to do this voting that they wanted to do? Um, all of that kind of came into, oh, well, like, yeah, you know what, like the blockchain actually doesn't scale quite, <laughs> quite well, the transactions per second are, are not that great. Um, and then that led into them founding another initiative, um, in addition to the Identity initiative, which was called Hermes. And so both of these initiatives kind of matured over time. Um, and eventually, uh, Polygon was looking uh, to acquire companies. So Polygon actually got started uh, a little bit earlier than them. They got started around uh, 2017 or so. And they had been looking at scaling blockchains. They had launched the original proof of stake uh, blockchain, but they were now looking for like the next iteration of that, right? What's the next scaling solution that they can bring to the market? Um, and then they you know, kind of stumbled upon the Hermes project at a conference in Paris. And that's when like eventually they agreed to acquire Hermes and the sort of these, you know, these three original founders that I'm talking about and bring them into Polygon. And then both of those things came together, right? So both the Hermes project, which is like the CKVM scaling project that was there, as well as the Identity project, which is also kind of an, uh, a project that Polygon decided to just embrace and then build Polygon ID using all of the identity technology that was originally developed by uh, Jordi and then the, you know, the team in, in, in Catalonia. That's so fascinating. That's why I really love hearing 
the stories of these various companies, because a lot of times it's not a linear path. There was a problem they were trying to solve and it led into a new enterprise. So that's really fascinating. So one thing that I'm curious to hear as somebody, if I were someone to come to Polygon ID um, and I wanted to use your services, what would be my journey um, into the Polygon ID ecosystem? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, there's there's uh, various items that, that we have. Um, I'll just share my screen to kind of show you a little bit of a walkthrough of what that looks like um, and That'd a little great. bit of the features of their of our did method. So just give me a sec here. Um, yeah, so um, some of them, the, let me just share. Do the, yeah. Um, yeah, so the Polygon ID protocol, right, is, is a protocol that just kind of aims to uh, keep users' privacy, right? And um, we have a did method and all that. And then a did method has uh, various features, right? It has key rotation. It'll allow you to do private revocation. Um, it allows you to manage profiles. So users can have multiple profiles that they can expose, right? If you're interacting with a verifier, um, you can choose which profile to use. And independent of that, you can use any of the credentials that were issued to you. Um, it also has uh, a CK query language, which allows verifiers to ask questions about the profiles and then uh, present those credentials and, uh, you know, you generate proofs to like kind of respond to the questions from the verifier. Um, we have a couple of, of methods to issue credentials, one that is kind of gasless and another one that enables on-chain, which is the MTP method. Uh, it also uses baby job job keys for optimized uh, generation of SIDK proofs and mobile devices. And then an interesting thing for anybody looking to use our DID method is that it's an EVM compatible DID method. It's, uh, you know, could be used in any kind of EVM chain and it's also fully open source under an MIT Apache license. Um, the heart of the protocol is really this, is that you have a verifiable credential the credential will say, you know, a few attributes about your identity. Maybe it'll have information about your date of birth. Uh, maybe it'll have information about your country of citizenship. Uh, maybe it could have information about your credit score, right? Um, then you'll interact with a verifier. The verifier will ask a set of questions around that uh, set of credentials that you have in your wallet. And then in order to answer those questions, you'll be generating a zero knowledge proof directly from your device, right? Be it your, your mobile phone or be it your browser that you're using to interact with the blockchain, right? At that point. Um, so you generate those zero knowledge proofs. And then in doing so, you present those proofs to the verifier. They can check the validity of those proofs, right? They can check that the data is, is correct. But um, what you've done now at, at this point is that you've revealed just enough information to answer the questions from the verifier instead of the whole credential data, right? So this is this, this famous thing in, in decentralized identity. It's like, show me that you're over 18 without like telling me where you live, what's your full name and you know where you vote. It's like all of these uh, things are just not revealed, but just specific answers to the question that is being asked by the verifier. So this is the heart of the protocol. Um, this is kind of the innovation that we bring. And if it's okay with you, I kind of show you a brief video of what that looks like and kind of just a more practical use case. Sure, that'd be so, great. Let me just jump into that. So yeah, so this is just a, a quick sample demo of what this looks like. Uh, this is just showing you um, kind of our, our application. It's the Polygon ID application. It's a sample application. We're kind of enabling, you know, multiple wallet providers to integrate with us. Um, so at this point is just the wallet creation process, right? So you're creating your wallet, you're getting it set up for the first time, you have no credentials inside of your wallet. Um, you're now going to go to a website that's going to issue you some credentials. So the first step is connecting your wallet, right? Now you're connecting your wallet, uh, you're getting the basic authentication, right? Now that authentication has been done, now your wallet's connected, right? So at this point, right, um, you may be asked, um, you know, to show some credential data. Maybe if it's a university, you're passing a test, uh, maybe, you know, some other thing. Um, you know, whatever set of data is required by the issuer in order to be able to offer you the claim, right? It could be an identity verification process, could be any, any sort of thing. Eventually the verification is successful and then you're offered a set of claims, right? So now you continue to add claims 
And you can see that QR code there that has the claims that you're now able to scan with your uh, device. You're seeing that um, now a set of claims are being offered. Uh, one is a proof of personhood. Another claim is uh, showing you uh, as a member of a DAO. Another claim is your date of birth. And then another, another claim is your country of residence, right? So these claims are um, just like a set of like credentials or cards that are stored in your, uh, you know, your, your wallet at this point. And the claims get added. And uh, yeah, now you can go into the kind of wallet app and you can see these like purple cards in there, these various credentials that were issued to you and like the data that's inside of them, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so now you have those credentials and now we're gonna actually, you know, make use of the credentials that like we can actually, you know, put them to use. Um, so now it's that process of, you know, interacting with the verifier, being, act being asked a question, and then satisfying that. So we're gonna to go to this sample DAO interface, which is Grail. We're gonna connect our wallet, just like we did in the last time. But now it's like for actually using the credentials. So now we've authenticated with the website. We're gonna go into this DAO community here, and we're gonna see a, a bunch of initiatives or proposals that are available to us. And uh, now we're gonna go into voting for a proposal. So for voting in the proposal, um, here's a kind of proposal that we want to vote on, but before we can vote, we have to prove our eligibility to vote, right? So in order to vote, uh, we're now being asked, uh, prove to me that you're a member of this DAO, right? So from the various credentials that we have, we're now going to use one of them, and we're going to answer the question, are you a member of this DAO, yes or no, right? That is kind of what's going to trigger now this cryptographic proof generation in which now you can um, you know, kind of generate the proof to answer the question from the verifier. Once the proof is generated, you can now vote and now you've successfully voted on the DAO, right? So that's just kind of illustrating a little bit of that process of you have a credential that's issued to you, you go to a verifier and you get asked a bunch of questions about your credentials, you generate some proofs on your device and then you've successfully you know, revealed data about your credentials without revealing the full credential. So that's like the main, um, you know, kind of innovation that we bring in, in just a little bit of the flow of, of what that looks like. Okay. And this can be used in various contexts as well, such as um, credentials for workplace, um, credentials for education. This could also be implied, applied in those cases as well. Yes. Yeah. Um, our intention is that, um, you know, you could go uh, with a number of verifiers and reveal data by yourself, like, you know, prove to me that you're a graduate of a computer science degree. Yes, no. Right. That kind of question. Or prove to me that your credit score is between 500 and 600. And that gives you eligible for a loan or something like that. Um, you know, then we have other more elaborate ones, like maybe you're at a traffic stop and you're interacting with a cop and you use your phone with an NFC and you quickly answer yes, no, a bunch of questions about, you know, is your car's uh, kind of insurance up to date? Do you have the proper registration? Like, is your license not expired? And you are able to answer all those questions, like, you know, just very quickly generating a proof without revealing more data than, than what's required. So yeah, it's it's use cases like that where you know we envision this being used and yeah, both both web three and web two use cases, right? So within web three, we think you know DAOs like these online cooperatives, you know, would benefit uh, a lot from this. Um, DeFi protocols, so well, you know, also looking to do some KYC things like that. Uh, but there's also web two use cases. So we're starting with web three. That's our initial focus area. But you know, we want to go broader than that if mm -hmm. possible. Yeah. Can you share a little bit about your business model? I know people are always curious about that. Kind of how are you going to market at this point? Um, yeah, it's actually um, fully open source. Um, we don't like um, really charge for Polygon ID at this point. Um, we see it more as a complement to the Polygon ecosystem. Um, so we're not intending, let's say, to directly monetize the identity protocol, but it's more just you know, a reason for people to build on top of the Polygon blockchain, right? So 
you know, we get additional incentives and revenue by more people using our blockchain, we get more fees, mm -hmm. and that kind of helps everybody in the ecosystem, right? So, uh, yeah, that's a little bit of why, you know, this is being released fully open source and, and as a benefit to the community on Polygon. Okay, great. Um, and I know you um, have been involved in our community over the past few months. I know Polygon ID joined as a DIFF member uh, earlier this year, and you've been uh, involved in some of the various work groups. Um, can you share a little bit about what are some of the, the work items that you followed and integrated into some of the work at Polygon ID? Yeah, um, yeah, some of these, uh, let me just uh, get to that point. <laughs> yeah, so we have uh, uh, various items from the diff that we are uh, already uh, integrated with or are intending to do uh, integration with uh, or engagement. Um, so one of them is the diff universal resolver, which we've already implemented and you know Marcus was uh, nice enough to review it for us. So, you know, very, uh, very thankful for that. Um, we are intending to support the well-known DIT configuration. It's in our roadmap. Um, you know, kind of along with kind of creating more trust in the ecosystem of who are the issuers and, um, you know, trust registries and, and things of, the, of that nature. Um, we're also looking to um, get some support for these uh, other standard called the Credential Manifest. It's just this uh, thing called output descriptors that kind of provide guidance for wallets on how to display the credential cards, like what logo to use, what color to use when displaying that. Um, that was brought to our attention by Thierry from the Altme wallet. So, um, they, you know, we're also, you know, we're open to, you know, input on, on the product and kind of adopting these standards is um, important to us where we see it, it makes sense, we'll, we'll do so. Um, then uh, from the last IAW conference, I uh, saw uh, this work around the standard wallet container uh, that's being led by Sam uh, Curran. And I believe that's also uh, something that's of interest to us because we do have a growing ecosystem of wallets and we, you know, we ideally would want them to follow standards and kind of bringing data vaults and, and things of that nature. So yeah, that's something that we're also looking to engage with. But yeah, we're open to uh, to more. And, you know, it's all about building together in the community and, and the folks at DIFF. So um, yeah, we're looking forward to to contributing. That's great. And then just my little side plug is that you anyone who's viewing can get involved in these work items at DIFF. Uh, we are open source community and um, we also have membership options. So you can um, join and get involved in that. So that's great. Um, the other thing I wanted to ask is in terms of the vision of Polygon ID, like of where, where do you guys see sort of things going in the next five to 10 years? And how do you see some of the work that you're doing uh, impacting the economy and the way we do things? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, I think for us, it's it's solving, at least in the more immediate term, is solving the need for you know identity verification in the Web three space, so you know solving identity for DAOs, solving identity for DeFi protocols, and getting more adoption from you know the various wallet providers. Um, and you know I think that the issue perhaps right now is people don't really care so much about privacy um, or keeping their data private as much. Uh, but I think over time that'll change. Um, so I think maybe we're a little bit of early with you know this whole CK technology and all that uh, some people are just happy to show their full credentials and and just you know just be done with it like they, they, they'll say they'll have nothing to hide but I think over time you know uh, privacy will become more and more relevant and um, you know we see this as one tool that will get people to kind of care about it and, and be able to implement privacy. Okay, sounds great. And then if any if there are any companies out there who are interested in working with Polygon ID, um, you know, should they get in touch with you? What would be the easiest way for them to do that? Yeah, uh, so if you, um, they can get in touch with me. Um, I'm also on Twitter as well. Um, my handle is Otomora uh, C, uh, so the letter C at the end. Um, also, I uh, we have a Discord channel and in the Polygon like tech, uh, website that you can access, 
And uh, if you want to get in touch with our BD team for Polygon uh, ID, you can do so as well from the Polygon website. You go to Polygon ID, and then there's like a contact us form there. Uh, if you have like specific questions or if you want to engage with us because you have a project or you have a wallet and you would like to, you know, talk to us. Uh, yeah, that's, well, that's another way to engage with us. Um, and then finally, we're, o we're also open to code contributions, right? It it's fully open source. So, you know, if, if somebody has a unique uh, feature they would like to contribute to us, you know, we're definitely open to that. So, you know, you can do a pull request on GitHub as well uh, if you have something you want to contribute. Sounds great. And for our viewers, I'll make sure to have all those links in the notes on uh, our YouTube channel as well. Okay, so, well, it was great having you today, Otto, and hearing more about Polygon ID and your journey as well. Um, and I'll just also encourage our listeners, um, if you get a chance, go to our uh, website, identity.foundation as well, to join and become a member. Um, and thank you so much once again, Otto. And if and anyone wants to join in the community, you can see, uh, you'll be able to see Otto there as well. Awesome. Thank you.